Hey, what's up everybody? This is Titan, Titans of CNC. And today I thought we would talk a little bit about high speed milling in difficult materials. And uh, it's because of you, because I'm reading those comments below. I constantly see people talking and asking about high speed milling. So I thought I would just talk about it, all right? Hey, before I start, I just wanna say, make sure that you subscribe to this channel. We're bringing education like never before, all right? Academy.titansofcnc.com the number one education site already in the world. We got 50,000 users on here just making it happen and we give it to you for free. Boom! Make sure that you hit that like button, put your comments down below and we will talk manufacturing. We'll keep the conversation going. Oh. You know, one of the things that we do that I think is misunderstood is sometimes I do these big speed tests, right? Like taking the shell mill and going from 100 inches a minute to 200 to 300 to 400 to 500, 800 inches a minute, like, oh, I'm stalling out the machine. Oh, and people are like, oh, Titan's like hurting the machine and Titan's this and Titan's that. I'm like, dude, listen, many people out there are running at 50 inches a minute and then they jump up to 100 inches a minute and they think that's fast, right? So I just want to show people like, look, you can actually run these things maxed out. The tools are amazing. The technology is amazing. Watch, I'll go 800 inches a minute and the machine, it doesn't die. It's still there, all right? But then I pull back and I, and I talk about the sweet spot and the service foot and the chip load and, and let you know like, hey, right here in this three to 400 inches a minute all day long, you know, it'll just repeat perfectly you're not going to break any inserts and that's the sweet spot right so one of our older videos also called pushing cnc machine speeds to the limit where i just took apart basically dropped in full depth smaller radial put it at 800 inches a minute you know in the corners and stuff it was slowing down just because that's how the machine goes but just got after it and then and then i calculated the time from like using you know, just a corner of the tool and going at a hundred inches a minute and compare that to dropping full depth, taking a radial going 800 inches a minute. I compared the slow time to the fast time and then I calculated by parts to show what the savings would be at the end of the year. And the whole point in that video was just to show that time is money right if you can get after it in a safe and rigid environment and you can get the material off quickly you're gonna make more money and i was just like wait we're roughing right so you guys all know me like let's lock it down dovetail it do whatever we have to let's put it in a rigid setup and let's get after it let's get as much material off as quickly as possible and then we're going to slow it down release the pressure come back and kiss that baby right just kiss it right in the tents and make it perfect all right so there's roughing and there's finishing they're two different worlds okay so in the same way i just want people to know when you're milling at 50 inches a minute and you're like oh and you get up to 100 and you're like oh you know what i mean i just want you to see here's 800 inches a minute and the tool didn't break. So it's possible, right? It's like the matrix, like I'm trying to free your mind. Like it's possible so we can start journeying out there, right? If you were in the 1920s and you seen the Model Ts, right? And, and different things and, and you saw cars run at that speed and you blasted into the future and just all of a sudden came through a time machine and you're here and you see a Lamborghini and it's shiny and beautiful, you'd be like, I saw, 50 miles per hour, but this probably can go 100 miles per hour. It would like, thinking 200 miles per hour, you couldn't even conceive of it. You know what I mean? So as machinists, we need to see it happen so that we know it's possible, and then we can push our own limits to solve problems in our own shops, and that's it, right? So another thing that we do is, is constantly give you information. When you look at the Lion video, we're using the, the big old, oh, Here's a six flute Kenna Metal Harvey 3 end mill. This end mill saved my life in hardened 718 Inconel. And uh, when every end mill in the world was breaking after 20 minutes to 90 minutes, this guy lasted seven hours. It chips, it breaks, it this, it keeps going though, it keeps going. And we call it the zombie mill. 
This is the zombie mill, right? But anyway, in the lion video, it's a little bit different, right? We had a long flute, okay? So we were dropping down three inches deep, which is four times diameter deep. And then we're taking a small radial, which was an 8% radial engagement. And then we're profiling. We're running right at 400 surface foot with a spindle speed RPMs of 2037. Our chip load was 0 0.0053, which gave us a feed rate of 64 inches per minute. All right. And we showed it just brop, brop. So what is this style of milling, right? You can just call it tricordial or peripheral milling, right? And the way that I explain it is back in the day, we used to bring an end mill down and we'd actually like cut with just a small portion of the end mill. So we'd have to drop all the way down, but we're cutting with a small portion of the end mill, right? And like titanium, titanium, if you look at the machinist handbook, it'll tell you like 175 surface foot, right? That's a standard for 604B, right? And they're looking at the certain types of cuts, okay? But today, with the CAD CAM, with the tooling, with the machines and the rigidity, everything changes, right? So instead of just using this small bit of the tool where you got a lot of flex involved, right? You got a lot of vibration involved where you're asking this small point to take so much of a cut. Today, it's a little bit different. Instead of stepping down from the top, we actually drop full depth and we just take that cut. So like two times diameter, three times diameter. And like with this nice rigid three quarter, I was going four times diameter and just getting after it. So when we do that and we, and we start showing you these high feeds, like document those feeds, like 604V, this tool, this surface foot, this chip load, boom, and save that information. All right, so let's talk about some of the other things that we've done, right? One of the cool things in the Lion video is that after we roughed it with the Harvey 3, we actually brought in the Duo Lock, right? From Kenamano. So this bad boy has the Harvey 3 insert and it actually locks into an extension. And guess what? When the insert breaks down, all you do is basically unscrew it, screw another one in, and you just keep milling right? And now you're buying that much carbide instead of that much carbide, okay? So another great video that we had was the tutorial on making the Titan 1M, the extra large version of the 1M out of Inconel, where literally I just went through the process of all tools from face milling to drilling to end milling to chamfering and drilling and thread milling, all of it right just taught you and gave you all the specs a hundred percent but let's back up a little bit after facing it and pre-drilling the pocket with a drill because i didn't want to like actually drop down with an end mill we actually took the same tool in a half inch version dropped to the bottom and basically just got after it in ink and l 625 all right it was a little different right so now on that part the maximum depth that we dropped down was 2.5 times diameter, so 1.25 deep, okay? Our radial, now it's Inconel. Now we're getting into some nickel, right? So our radial in at that depth was at 4%, okay? And then our surface foot was at 210, okay? So it was 400 on the titanium, right? And even 460 at times, but we dropped it down to 210 for the ink and L because of the nickel content and it was a harder material, right? But 210 in ink and L is fast, but we take off the pressure from the tool. We drop it down, use the entire flute, right? So remember, I was talking about just the tip, but now I'm dropping all the way down. Now I'm taking an even cut across all the flutes, which gives me rigidity in cut. You guys got that? So I'm taking it all, and basically that keeps my tool rigid so I can actually take a nice fast cut. And sometimes when you're that deep and you're going fast, you actually wanna get into that cut aggressively so that you put pressure on the tool so it doesn't chatter. 
All right, so at 210 surface foot, our spindle was running at 1,604 RPMs, okay? And then our chip load was at 0.0042, okay? Which gave us a speed of 40 inches per minute, all right? And that's a consistent cut where we can actually get after it for a long time. When, when I talk about ink and I'm just like, anything over 90 minutes, is actually good for an end mill, right? And you go fast and you make it happen. Your MRR is through the roof and basically you get as much material off in as little time as possible. And that's Inconel, right? So to end the video, how about I give you a few more recommendations, right? Let's, let's give you the, the specs for a few more materials, okay? So one material that I did with the drilling was 4140, right? At a rock well of about 48. Okay, so this is a standard material that, that we actually machine and you can get after it, right? It's, it's a hard material, but we can get after it, especially with a tool like this, okay? So my recommendation would be take a 10% radial and then drop down two to three times diameter and then your surface footage is gonna be at 364 surface foot to 560 so see that range right there 364 to 560 and depending on your rigidity depending on how how high you are how long the tool is right depending on all the variables that's your sweet spot to stay in there all right if you're just roughing and getting after it then stay on the high end so long your tool's rigid all right so the chip load for the 4140 is going to be about 0.00 to 0.0039, all right? And make sure it's a six flute. You're calculating it by six flutes, right? So, so you're getting after it. So in steel, on the high end at 48 Rockwell, you're going 100 inches per minute and you're getting after it, all right? So that's good. All right, so let's go with one more material, all right? So how about 316 stainless? Ah, oh, that's abrasive. Like you guys know 316, right? But again, same tool, workhorse, making it happen, all right? So we're gonna do the same thing, all right? So think about the radial engagement. Inconel is at 4%, right? Titanium, I'm up at 8%. I go about eight to 10% radial engagement when I'm full depth. And then we went to steel and I just said, okay, 10% solid, right? And because we're peripheral milling, why don't we stay at 10% on the 316 also, all right? So our surface footage is gonna be at 280 to 364. It's abrasive, right? You gotta look, you gotta look at the hardness, you gotta look at that it's stainless, right? It's not 303, 303 is butter. Okay, so at 316 is, is a little different, right? And we want to have longevity in cut at fast speed rates, okay? And our chip load is going to be 0 0.0031 to 0 0.0034. And that gives us a feed rate of 56 inches per minute. That's getting after it. Okay, all right, so the video's already gone like long enough, so let's just end it there. So that's a little bit of milling and getting after it in different materials. We covered titanium, we covered Inconel, we covered 4140 and 316 stainless, and we'll do another video on aluminum, right? And again, you guys think I'm crazy, right? Oh, he's going 800 inches a minute, like, oh, he's gonna ruin his machine. Well, guess what? I'm about to bring videos at 1,600 inches per minute. If somebody's running at 100 inches per minute and roughing, and I run at 1,600 inches per minute, then who's gonna get the bid, and how much can I actually quote for, knowing that I'm 16 times faster? Right? I'm a job shop owner. Like, I gotta think about those things. Does that mean that I'm gonna finish and like run it that fast when I'm finishing? No. I'm gonna come back and kiss that baby. I'm gonna relax it, you know? And I'm not gonna run everything at 1600 inches a minute, but I'm gonna do it to show you that it's possible so we can back up, we can find the sweet spot, we can be successful, we can raise up our trade, raise up our shops, have culture, make it happen. Oh, you guys have a great day. Boom.